Hello, Bill. I'll answer your questions. I'll just go through them, and hopefully it'll uh, it'll give you what you want. Uh, so, what's my background? Um, I uh, I'm from South Wales. I've uh, always been involved in radio since hospital radio days. Got my first sort of experience uh, reclaiming tape at Gwent Broadcasting. Went off to university in Leicester. Uh, at the time, um, I got uh, work at Radio Air in Leeds. Uh, at weekends, I went to Pennine, Viking and Hallam and ended up at Leicester Sound, went to Devon Air. Uh, that lost its franchise, went to Mix 96 in Aylesbury, went to the women's station Viva, um, and then that went belly up and did lots of RSLs, went back home to Wales, won the Val- Valley's radio licence, um, won the licence in West Somerset, Key West, um, which was a weird experience. I've got lots of friends there, but um, my now dead business partner was an alcoholic, and it was a nightmare. Uh, then went to Pembrokeshire, won the Pembrokeshire licence, and then we won Carmarthenshire, sold that, and was going to retire, but went to Scilly and started the community radio licence. After 10 years of doing that, I kind of had, had enough of living on an island, really, and I wanted to go back to the mainland, and I thought, because my hobby is travel, to do a travel show would be the best thing. Uh, did that for two years, but kind of got bored of, of that, really. It took the fun out of travel, really. Everybody warned me. And uh, I chose Shaftesbury because I, I knew the area. I wanted to stay in the West Country, but I didn't want to live um, any further east. And it was relatively good for getting to the London airports. So that was the primary reason for Shaftesbury. But I got involved with lots of stuff when I was in Shaftesbury when I wasn't travelling. And um, started making podcasts and realised there was no local newspaper for the area. And um, thought there was an opportunity to do podcasting and that kind of merged into the radio project. So that's how Alfred really started about three years ago as a weekly podcast. Then when the pandemic came, we'd already applied for a radio licence actually, but um, when the pandemic came, we decided to go daily and do a, um, an hour, what, 45 minutes to an hour long daily programme. Uh, the local newspaper folded. We were the only media. The town council sent a leaflet door to door telling people to listen to us. And that, that changed everything. And people started listening on smart speakers. People were buying smart speakers for blind or elderly relatives. Uh, it really changed everything. So um, that, that, that's how the podcast started. The idea for Alfred as an all-speech station... Um, was basically inspired by my friend John Evington um, because I'd heard his Manchester Business Radio and I thought, that's quite a neat idea. And I thought it would be interesting nowadays with so many radio stations, you can never play music that appeals to everybody. I've got a pathological dislike of paying PRS bills and PRS's general attitude. And uh, I thought it would be nice actually not to have to worry about all of that um, because people only go to your station for the content. That's what it's all about. That's the only thing you've got. So many community stations just are kind of for the presenters rather than listeners. But people want local news and information or to hear people they know. So if you give people what they want, they'll listen to you. And that's what's happened with us. So that's how we determined the need. I mean, we had a public meeting that I attended and they did a a hand count. How did people find out about this? Was it the Blackmore Vale magazine, which is the weekly paper? A couple of hands went up. Alfred and... Yeah, three quarters of the room. And that was when the weekly podcast had started. And I thought, wow, there's there's something big happening here. Um, so, and we did market research as well, surveys uh, that, that showed people wanted to have a community radio station. We're geographically isolated. It's a small town, very arty. People know each other. And um, it's just the right sort of place for it. There are some towns which do lend themselves to great radio. Um, so the community involvement's been immense um, because... Although we've got, you know, technically we have a studio, which is just a roadcaster in a cupboard in the art centre that nobody ever uses. Everything we do is is done basically on laptops or in the field. Um, we never wanted to do that sort of radio where you sit in a studio all day. We've got it purely and simply for compliance reasons. So if anybody wants to use it, they can. And all they can do is record phone calls or, or, or you know, interviews face to face. We can't go live from it. Um we we wanted a different model, and I wanted a challenge personally as well, having done 30 years of commercial radio and a bit of BBC. I wanted to see if we could do something really different than quite now and have a thematic station that served up really what people wanted. So there's nothing from beyond seven miles from Shaftesbury on the station at all. It's all local, no national news. Everything's entirely local. And that was the challenge and is the challenge. Um, our volunteers' demographics, very much retirement age, as in line with most things in the town, to be honest. We have a few people younger, but it's generally retired people, younger retired people, a lot of people with a bit of money coming to Shaftesbury and 
um, get attracted by the town's arty sort of vibe. Uh, we've got a big fringe committee. I'm on the chairman of the I'm I'm on the committee of the, the fringe festival and the chamber of commerce, and they're they're quite proactive locally. And uh, we do a lot in town. There's lots of arts events going on. It's the same people doing everything, but it's 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 you know a great place to live in that in that respect. The impact of the pandemic has been to make the project because we were the media. Um, it's been really useful in a number of ways, establishing demand, getting people to listen to us. Um, and at a time when people really were hungry for local information and a sense of connection. And also our volunteers, I could just say, we need your help. You know, we're going to lockdown. We've got to do this. Instead of prevaricating and um, wondering whether you're going to do it or not, you've got to do it starting tomorrow. Just pull your finger out. And they did. They rose to the challenge and it was brilliant. So, I mean, that really has made us. Um, a return to normal, how will it impact Alfred? Well, I mean, we've kind of been through that, really. I mean, when the lockdowns ended, it got tough for a while doing the daily podcast because there wasn't the fear factor that made people want to listen to the live update from the doctor, or live, you know, the daily update from the doctor's surgery each day. Um, they, they lost the need to hear that, but... Still, the fun things that you reflect on local radio, like events and activities, weren't happening. So it was it was very difficult filling content. But we're way past that now. Pandemics are out the window, as far as we're concerned. There's, um, I'm not a COVID denier or anything, but um, it just doesn't impact on, on life in a small town like this anymore. It really doesn't. People are testing positive still, but you don't. It's business as normal. It has been for quite a few months. Um, how is Storm Eunice affecting Alfred? Quite a lot. We've been doing updates. I, I was up at four this morning recording the first Alfred Daily broadcast because each of the, the hourly um, news programmes that go around, um, they, they get repeated with significant refreshing and, and updating of the content. So I was basically, you know, the, the bolts and braces of the packages are done in the field, so you can't do the multiple versions of those. Um, but I can change cues and context and we were just putting lots of information out. We have a lot of people that follow us on social media because of the podcast. We've got about, I think it's about 6,000 followers on Facebook, for example, in a town of, what, 7,000. Um, so, I mean, it's it, we get a good connection with the community. People are aware of it, and they feed us stuff. And throughout the days of doing the podcast alone, we're still doing the podcast, people call it the radio. They don't differentiate between podcasts and radio. They just say, oh, I'm going to be on the radio when they're going to be on the podcast. It's odd. And we have, like commercial radio, with a podcast, people have gone into shops and bought things or uh, mentioned things they've heard because it's all well, they've got. Um, so the storm units has affected us in that we've been putting information out hourly and it's now getting on for 6 p.m. and I'm still sitting pretty much where I've been sitting all day just taking phone calls and updating information and our social media as well. So I'm glad it's all over. We have a weatherman as well, being a sort of um, information station that's important. And uh, I've been talking to Sean well, virtually hourly, doing sort of two, three-minute updates on stuff, doing readings from um, the things that measure... Aeronometers, is it? That, that measure the gusts. So that's that's good. Business model. Well, I mean, but I don't need to make money from it because I don't need to make money because of, you know, Radio Pembrokeshire days and also I've got property um, so I don't have to work, um, but I do work <laughs> probably 18 hours a day because I want to, because uh, it's a community thing. So the business model is just to break even uh, and a bit extra. And we are, we're fully sold for the next year. Uh, it costs about under four grand to run the station. And we've got about seven and a half grand in. And um, we've got five, we're, in terms of commercial advertising, we've got five clients. We won't take any more. And um, we're just doing NPR style mentions, support for this station brought to you by and some of the clients like the supermarket um, will be able to do live reads because they've got that kind of thing going on. Um, other clients like Wessex Internet, our local ISP or Gritchie Brewery don't want that. They just want to have the mention and the awareness. Uh, and a local, big local, well, I say big local employee, employee uh, 130 people work at BV Dairy. They're just happy having having the mention. Um, so our business model is just to break even and, and put some money aside for rainy days. What does your role at Alfred consist of day to day? Oh, well, it's, it's basically I'm the only full time person, so it's everything. That's the best way to describe it. Long term strategic, there isn't a strategy. Um, I, this is my last radio gig. Um, I'll have done everything I want to do after this, um, and I'm 52 now, and I've worked in radio since yeah, full time. 
since graduating uni in 20, uh, 21 and you know, paid radio work since I was 16. So I've done everything I want to do within the sector. After this, this was the last challenge. So I would like to bring on more people to take a more of more of a steer in terms of management here. It probably will happen organically. I've got some some good people, but not everybody wants to do everything. We've got good people who want to do a couple of you know, hours a week really well um, rather than... Um, getting involved and there were different models as well being a speech only station as well people kind of work in silos um we've, we've got teams that make programs so we've got a business team that make a business podcast effectively that's put on the radio but it's been created for the the radio station we have a um a, a podcast team if you like that do an arts program each week which goes on the radio so the podcast has been created for radio um but they're kind of separate units that collaborate on whatsapp and slack and they record their own program. We meet up all together socially once a month, and I talk to them all you know, a couple of times a week on, on WhatsApp, but they're their own separate entities, silo working, really, although we have a couple of floating people that just do general features and want to be across everything. Um, what's the relationship with the local community? We're really good. I mean, we're involved with everything. Business, ditto, because we're not charging for advertising. We only have five clients on. Um, we don't say no to... A, we don't do advertising for people, but I'm not, you know, grumpy about giving a mention to a business that's opening because it's all about you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. If you support other businesses and promote them without being too overly commercial, because I'm not charging for this, um, then that's OK. And people tend to like you. Local authority. And we've got a good relationship with Dorset Council. The, the senior um, members I need to talk to, that they're all quite a long way away, usually about, you know, 45 miles or so away because we're right in the north of the county it's a unitary authority but um the ones i need to talk to take my calls um because we're fair and we do a lot of news and we're really the only people doing a lot of news in dorset as well um so there's no problem with with local relations in that context do i see a future for more stations modeled on alfred um i I don't uh, i'd like to see more stations being different and unique and reflecting their area I don't think you can model a station on Alfred because Alfred evolved to be Shaftesbury. Um, and I don't like that kind of cookie-cutter approach, really. I think um, I'd love the old days when you used to drive up the M1 and every station sounded different. You knew you were listening to Trent or BRMB just from the processing and the, just the way the presenters spoke before we even heard any eye dents. Uh, they had stationalities. And although that's a bit naff and sort of old school... Um, I think radio could have different stationalities, different services reflecting their locale. And we're very much shaped by Shaftesbury, very arty, with lots of walking features and outdoors stuff and very crafty um, and a lot of history and civic stuff. That's you know, a rich theme for us because that's how the town, the drum the town beats to. And it's, it, it's born in Shaftesbury's image. And I, th- I think when you start copying concepts i think you lose something i mean the, the, broadly the concept of having an all speech local station can be done by anybody but it's how you execute it and what you do as part of that that creates your own distinctive service and that's what's important so i'd encourage everybody to think outside the box well alfred look at ssdab no we were thinking about it um we don't need to um, we weren't seriously we were considering when we had a lot of planning issues with the aerial and dorset council being very much behind the planning game, uh, taking months to even acknowledge a planning application. We wondered whether we were going to bother actually proceeding with the FM service at all because we have enough engagement and response from the podcast only without the regulatory issues. But we have done FM. Um, We would potentially, if somebody else got the small-scale DAB, well, we would be allowed on the DAB, so we'd go on it. But I'm not going to go for multiplex because... I want to be the person, the passenger that rides on the train and not rail track or whatever they're called now, delivering the infrastructure and sorting out the points. So I I, I have no interest in being an infrastructure provider. I want to make the programmes, and that's what this is about as well. Um, Without having a a commercial load and have to worry about commercial um, advertising, you, you can have fun. You can do the thing I got into radio for rather than worrying about balancing the books. What are my next plans for Alfred? Um, there aren't any, really. It's just evolving, getting more people, getting better. Um, trying to reduce my workload, but you know, when you launch a station, it's a sliding scale day by day when it gets easier, doesn't it? My next plans, I don't have any. I'm, I'm planning some holidays. 
but that's about it. Um, it's probably the wrong time to ask, really, since you know, we've just launched and it's all still a bit head down trying to get it all sorted because there are some unique challenges we have that most stations don't have. If you're automating speech, um, it's, it's much more difficult than automating music in terms of repetition and things that might fade to hit junctions. So that's been quite a challenge and we're still working through all of that. So hopefully I've given you the answers that you want. I know I've rambled on for, oh my God, 15 minutes, but I just find it easier doing it that way. So hopefully you can get something out of that. And if it's all rubbish, tell me I won't be offended. Thanks, Bill.